And welcome again to the big match. Today our lineup brings you action from three First Division games. Our main match is Crystal Palace against Leeds United. That is a thrilling and a fiercely competitive game. And we shall back it up by that great Manchester derby game between Manchester City and Manchester United. And as our bonus match today, we have the goals from Norwich City against West Bromwich Albion. But let's move straight on then to Selhurst Park for Crystal Palace against Leeds United. With the Leeds United team out first on a pitch that has now become very heavy after a lot of rain, they come to Selhurst Park lying third in the first division. Always a great attraction now. And to add to that attraction, there's a touch of public relations about them with this wave to the crowd. But soon they'll get down to the business against a side that after spending so much money at last can see a ray of light. Because this Crystal Palace side, stimulated by the arrival of players like Don Rogers, have now taken three points from their last four. And their confidence will be helped now because they're able to name an unchanged side. Leeds United, for their part, are not so lucky. Their team, in which Billy Bremner will be making his 600th appearance for the club, is without Paul Madeley, Jackie Charlton and Eddie Gray. Roy Ellum comes in at number five, and Mick Bates gets another chance at number 11. The crowd is a very healthy 38,000, now waiting for the whistle to start from referee Bob Mathewson of Bolton. So Leeds United kick off defending the goal to our right, today wearing an all-yellow strip. So if you're watching this in black and white, Crystal Palace aside with the broad bands of claret and blue and the darker stockings. Palace riding on a rather confident wave at the moment with three points from their last four. Bates turning it back to Harvey since the arrival of Don Rogers. Leeds United for their part unbeaten in their last 11 games and now lying third in the first division. Giles, one of five Leeds United players who played in World Cup games on Wednesday night. Bremner trying to follow in quickly from uh, Clark's touch off and now Mick Bates again. Lorimer. And across again there, and Bell getting up for it. Two Palace players going for it, and Clark, um, Jones rather was behind them. Payne's header away, as far as Bremner. Clark and Taylor. Again, it's Bates to Giles. And again, Bremner sending uh, Giles away. A good-looking cross there. Just behind that Crystal Palace crossbar. Giles again at the very heart of it for Leeds United. Who in three visits uh, since Crystal Palace came back to the first division, three visits of Leeds United have all finished 1 1. Well, Taylor a little fortunate there. And in fact, I suppose what you'd call the professional foul, and foul in pulling Lorimer back. Bob Matthewson, the referee, making it clear to Taylor that he wants no more of it. Lorimer again now, with Giles going down the right. The little chip there towards Mick Jones getting up, and a goal! No, disallowed. Disallowed by Bob Matthewson because Jones was pushing down on the Crystal Palace defender. And so that was a let-off, but at the same time a warning for Crystal Palace, and now it's Rogers. Well, if the idea was to get inside Reaney for... Hughes, who'd switched wings, it didn't come off. Well, Jones, who obviously thought that he scored his tenth goal of the season there. Hunter, in fact, sticking very close to Ellum in that back four. I suppose Leeds maybe just a little unsure still of Roy Ellum, the man they bought from Huddersfield to replace Jack Charlton, but it's Lorimer now for Leeds. Bremner. being forced back by the eagerness of Crystal Palace there, but a beautiful piece of turning again by Bremner that found Giles. Then on to Lorimer, and now to Reaney. Past Cook to Clark. Bremner. Leeds so dominant at the moment, and a lot of space there for Giles. Clark making a run, Jones is in there, Bates is in there. Not it back by Bates for Bremner. Poor one by him to Cook, and now to Hughes. Forward into the space there for Rogers. Can he get it? No. Craven, can he? Yes, he can. Craven! Oh, a goal! Oh, a wonderful goal by John Craven! Rogers certainly had a part in it, and Craven, who looked for a moment as though he'd lost it, picked himself up with such a 
agility and hammered it into the roof of the net, 1-0 to Crystal Palace. A superb piece of play by John Craven. So long underrated, but certainly in the last few weeks, showing the potential that clearly the Crystal Palace must have seen when they bought him from Blackpool. Bobby Bell going in, back to John Jackson. And that after Leeds United had dominated completely the first ten minutes of the game. Giles. Jones has gone away and uh, it hit him on the back and Lorimer's following it in. And a fine save by Jackson. And he needed to hold it because Clark, who snapped up any rebounds, was there. Mulligan, Payne, skillful play again by Payne, and Craven will give Ellen a bit of difficulty there. Back to Hughes. Palace growing in confidence that they got with their goal. Payne now back for Cook. Slipped there first time for Phillip, and that was a fraction wide. Ian Phillip nearly capitalising on the growing confidence of Palace and scoring. His first goal for his new club, so close to it. But now Bates for Leeds United. Giles. Jones. Bates back to Reed. Bates this time to Lloyd. And now to Brent. Jones. Turned off for Reed. Clark in the middle. Lauren has gone in the middle as well, but it's with Jones. Reedy, Bremner. Good skills again. Their confidence by no means shaken Leeds United. Bates turning it again towards Clark. And a good interception there by Mel Blythe. Hunter. Blythe again. But Cherry following it through now for Leeds. Still Trevor Cherry. And that might be difficult. <laughs> Off Bell, in fact, but he took the sting out of it and enabled uh, Jackson to win his catch. Hughes. Into the path of Rogers. Now can he get going? No, because Hunter, so sure again, was there. Four leads. Clark. Giles. Bremner. Forward for Jones. Giles, Mick ba or rather Lorimer, a scorching shot and a super save from Peter Lorimer by John Jackson. That would just have crept inside that far post. A Lorimer special. Roy Ellum now coming up for the corner that comes as a result of that save from John Jackson. Lorimer with it now for Leeds United, another low one. Clark with a header. And Bremner will hope to get in, but Jackson was very quickly off his line. <laughs> Mulligan to Cook. Mulligan. Rogers. And Charlie Cook fighting and winning. And he'll get another chance. Still with Cook. Payne. Cook again. He killed that beautifully and it came to him firmly. Jinking, bobbing, weaving. And then finding Philip. Now, will he let one go? Straight at Ellum. And Ellum certainly felt that one. Philip again. And Reaney back to Harvey. Now it's Bates, leaving it for Bremner. Giles, hopefully again into the path of Bates, but Taylor very quick to turn it back to Jackson. Payne, Cook outside him, here's Cook. Hughes and Craven in the middle. And Rogers. It's Rogers now. And that might be 
a little too firm for John Hughes. Just keeping it in, and no, the linesman is flagging on the far side as he turns it in again. I wasn't sure that went over, but the linesman was sure that it was. And Hughes is arguing and saying that the whole of the ball did not cross that byline. And in fact, he may have argued a little too much, being called back again. But I don't think the referee is looking for the book, merely giving a second warning to John Hughes. Giles for Leeds. Reedy, Bremner. A jump again by Clark. Giles. And just over that bar. Well, Jackson was behind it. Bell wasn't sure that he was. Got his head in the way. And the deflection might have caused Jackson uh, a problem or two. Instead, it's a corner. Lorimer wants more to take it, Jones to wait for it, Bell is in there too, a deeper one this time towards Ellum. Giles hitting it first time, against the post, and somehow they scrambled that away, with Leeds having none of the luck there. Rogers, and here go over his head in fact, and now Mulligan to pick up the loose one. Past Hunter, inside to Payne, inside to Cook. Getting behind this Crystal Palace side, relieved as they must have been, that Giles' shot hit the post. And now Payne. And now Craven! Yes, another goal! John Craven! And the crowd have gone crazy because it's not often at Selhurst Park, but they've seen moments like this. Hughes was right in there. Payne only half hit his shot. Craven finished it off. 2-0 to Crystal Palace. Two minutes to go to half-time. And the crowd are thoroughly enjoying themselves. Not so David Harvey. And now Leeds have a real pressure on them. Craven. The book is coming out for the foul on Craven. And Leeds don't like it. Well, Craven, the man who scored both the goals, is down and injured. And Bob Mathewson now will call Norman Hunter to him. And Norman Hunter, I would think, would go into the book. The look on Norman's face and the smile that says, yes, ref, I understand. And Bob Mathewson, not beguiled by the smile, says, I'm going to book you for that. And Craven, who has been such an improved player for Crystal Palace, and scorer of both their goals today. Got the protection of the referee there. And in fact, while that's been going on, Paul Green has been getting some attention from Les Cocker. through all the bad times here at Selhurst Park. They're Leeds United scarf, so they're not giving up hope yet. But even through all the bad times here at Selhurst Park, the crowd have always been so solidly behind this side. And for them alone, it's good to see they've got uh, plenty to get happy about this afternoon. And what a noise they're making. So Palace get the free kick and it's placed by Mulligan to Rogers. The turn inside again, Hunter, and off Giles and back to Bates, but it's short and it's the foot. A lot of 
of the yellow shirts are back now. Taylor turning it in once more. And it won't come to Rogers, but it'll come to Hughes. And it's still with Hughes, and now with Rogers. And he tried to aim one to the far post and put it instead straight to Harvey. Lorimer now for Leeds. And Bell backpedalling well. Clark. Giles. Into injury time at the end of the first half. Bates once more crossing it into the Palace area. Once more, Bell is there. Rogers back to help. Ellum rather clumsily off his body. But Hunter so faithful and reliable. Bates. And now Clark, as the whistle goes for the end of the first half, and there haven't been many halves like it at Sellers Park, John Craver, against all the odds, scores two goals to give Crystal Palace a comfortable lead at half-time over Leeds United. Still to come on the programme today, highlights of that tremendous derby game in Manchester between Manchester City and Manchester United. But here at Selhurst Park, the half-time score reads Crystal Palace 2, Leeds United nil, and we'll be back with the second half in just a couple of minutes. So Palace then get us away at the start of the second half. Well buoyed up. I should think there were some tremendous scenes in their dressing room as they tried to uh, convince each other that they can in fact carry on in this uh, vein against one of the best sides in Europe, Leeds United. Cook. Taylor and Ellum and now Taylor again Cook I suppose Leeds for their part feel themselves a little unfortunate having played so much good approach work in the first half to go in two down Craven in fact jumping up just glancing it on for Rogers. Rogers now wide for Hughes side for Rogers and it won't come back again but Rogers again there for Crystal Palace and he turned it straight to Johnny Giles and back to David Hart now it's Bates Bremner and Giles Bremner Bates turning it in once more towards Mick Jones. And Ian Phillip. To Charlie Cook. Good control there by Cook, and he finds Tony Taylor. Craven. Here go for Cook. They sold leads there beautifully, and Rogers has gone in the middle. And that, in fact, clips off Reedy. Trevor Cherry. Hunter. Bremner. Bates. Bremner's gone through. Another little surging run by him and Mick Jones. Now Jones, can he turn this across? It's right across that goal. And out of play before Clark can snap on it. And a goal kick for Crystal Palace. Jones turning it from a very sharp angle, but in fact the opening was made for him by Billy Bremner quick change of pace by him Jones again making one of those unselfish runs and it might lead the way out for Clark Knight for Jones yes and he made no mistake and that's a reward for some 
very unselfish running right through this game by Mick Jones. And as that ball came loose to him, left foot, bang, 2-1. Bristol Palace 2, Leeds United 1, 11 minutes of the second half gone. And now the game is thrown wide open again. And Leeds, in fact, who've been coming forward with something like 70% of this game, must have been a little surprised to go in two down at half-time. Now must feel they're back with a chance. And, of course, on the other side of the coin, it really becomes a test of the character now that's in this new Crystal Palace side. Bert Head was saying before the game, this really is the big one that will test us. And now they really are in for a searching test. It's Hunter puts it through, but glides at the back of it now for Crystal Palace. Blythe. Craven just nodding it on over Hunter's head, but Ellen was there, the short ball to Bremner now. Giles. That's where the motoring is going to be done in the middle of the field by Bremner and Giles now to set up more and more chances for Lorimer, Clark and Jones. Giles to Bremner. Challenged by Cook. Now Palace have got to raise their game again. But Reini finding Ellen. Leeds really are piling so many men forward now, and that should be Jackson's. Mulligan. That's for Philip. He hoped to nod that on into the path of pain, but Bremner got there before him. Bates now. A little flick wider, Philip, for Giles. Back for Bates again. Tremendous competitive match this now. Bremner for Leeds United. Hunter. Clark got in there with a the head. Can Bates turn on it? Giles hoping to hit it first time. And the crowd now by no means as boisterous as they, as they were just before half-time. Sensing that Leeds United are looking even more a dangerous proposition in this second half. Jackson then with the goal kick for Crystal Palace. Ellum's header, and there was a push by Craven on Ellum as they both ran for it. Bremner taking the free kick very quickly. Surprising the referee, I think. Cherry, Bremner. Giles. Not a good one by Giles, but uh, Rogers couldn't kill it. And now Ellum. Those yellow shirts are coming forward all the time now for Leeds United. Back with Billy Bremner. Feeney, and it comes off him rather fortuitously there for Billy Bremner. But there's a swift little turn again by Billy Bremner, typical of him, and Bates turning it on towards Clark. Cook right in deep. Gets it away for Hughes. Craven, almost the lone ranger up front for Crystal Palace. Philip going in, but unable to make very much of an impression. And Ellum for Leeds United. Clark's header, Billy Bremner. Now Bates. Lorimer. Is that the moment for another long one? Oh, and Jackson lost that one. And it was in the end Mulligan who put it behind. It must have been dipping and curling because Jackson, such a confident goalkeeper, lost that somewhere along the way. And Leeds get a corner. And the pressure continues to grow on Crystal Palace. Giles is going to take it. Cherry's gone up and Hunter's there too. And Cherry with a header! Bremner wanting still more effort from Leeds United, are showing so much more effort in this second half. Now here's a chance for Palace to set something up with a lot of space on the right for Mulligan. Hughes wanting it quicker than uh, Mulligan was prepared to give it. Philip now. 
Rogers calling for it, but it's Tony Taylor instead. Taylor trying to quicken the pace of it all up, and that's not a bad cross by him. Craven up, and just wide. But the referee again penalising a player in that six-yard area for using his hands on a, an opponent's shoulders. And in fact, he'd uh, given a free kick to Leeds United and allowed Leeds United to go away with a goal kick. Cherry getting there before Mulligan. Bremner. Jones was back on his heels for a moment there, but Giles controlling that superbly defined Lorimer. And a good catch by Jackson. Palace almost pen continually now in their own half and indeed very often in their own penalty area. But now Rogers giving them a chance to break out. Still done Rogers. Turned inside for Hughes. And in for Payne. And he hammered that one against uh, Cherry as he had to come out quickly. And now Palace beginning to raise themselves again. Lorimer. And a throw to Crystal Palace. And Blythe had a foot over the line when he took that throw. And so the throw will go to Leeds United. Greeny, Giles, Bates going in on it, he'll play that back for Clark, but it won't come hard enough for Clark, and Bell gets in for Palace again. But Clark, to his credit, never gave up. Lorimer. Shadowed by Tony Taylor, but Lorimer onto the left foot, towards Jones again, and this time Philip with a chance to get it away. A flick one side of Bremner, and only goes, and Craven is offside. Craven is offside. And so Leeds get another free kick with another opportunity to set up a move to lift that ball into the Palace area. Giles. Ellum. Greeny. Giles. This really is a test for Crystal Palace now. If they can hold on halfway through the second half now. A little over 20 minutes to go. And now Rogers on the break. And really it's two against two if Rogers can keep going. Hunter trying to get him out towards that touchline. Holding him up long enough for others to get back. And it's with Cook. John Hughes will jump for this one. Again, somebody penalised for pushing down on uh, a defender in the area. Seems to be Mr. Matthewson's pet hate at the moment. Giles. Lorimer. Swept across to the far side for Trevor Cherry. In fact, Rini and Cherry doing almost as much attacking as strikers at the moment. Here's Lorimer, and here's Giles. Lorimer, a chance to cross it and cross it quickly. Jackson down at the feet of the ball. Not helped by a deflection. And a good throw that sends Rogers on his way. Faced by Hunter. Now for Cook. This is where Palace might have their chances. Leeds fling so many men forward. Craven. Claiming he was held back. The referee not agreeing, and Giles taking it up again for Leeds United. Greeny. Lorimer. Giving Blythe a bit of a tussle there. And that might be very difficult indeed for Jackson. It's Mulligan. All leaving it to Cook and Mulligan getting in a mix up there. And Leeds get a corner. 
Palace didn't entirely agree with it. But it was a punishment for Cook and Mulligan mixing themselves up as they did. And it's going to be Mick Bates to take it. And Hunter again right in there. Cherry two and Clark. Jones in the six-yard area. That's the man it's aimed for, Jones. And Jackson fisting it away. Cook taking too long to get it away. Giles. And a goal! Scored by Johnny Giles. And Cork in the first place when Charlie Cook didn't get it out of the penalty area. Cook failed to get it out. Leeds got possession, and Giles found the far corner of the net. So Leeds have really come back, and that was a very skillfully placed shot by Johnny Giles, and now it really opens the game still more. gone past Rini once or twice and got his crosses in. Now Cook's got a chance to get his in. Still with Cook. A little dig there by Charlie Cook. And Craven couldn't turn it back, but he's got a corner. Such a deceptive little cross by Charlie Cook, just floating over the head of Hunter. But now the corner then for Crystal Palace. Bell Blythe right in there. And Leeds will be happy to let that one go for the goal kick. Well, Mick Bates is off the field as the game goes on. Leeds for the moment down to ten men. And waiting to get Terry Yorath on. And the ball out of play now will be the chance for Yorath to come on. The linesman darting into his way as though it's some awful crime that he should get on without reporting to the referee. They have to report to the referee first. So Yorath, who missed the Wales-England game because of injury, fit now to come on for these last few minutes. Mulligan and Hughes over on the right. This is Hughes. Going past Yorath with all his strength, and Bremner like a little bee after him. And there goes the whistle at the end of a very fine game indeed, with John Craven giving Crystal Palace so much hope with their two goals, two goals in the first half but then Leeds showing all their customary character and strength. Johnny Giles getting one of the goals in the second half, Mick Jones the other one, to give perhaps the right sort of result at the end. So we come to a final scoreline after a wonderful afternoon at Selhurst Park that reads Crystal Palace 2, Leeds United 2. So a draw after a truly momentous match. But today the headlines refer more to that Norman Hunter tackle on John Craven just before half-time and a comment that was alleged to be made to the referee Matthewson afterwards. That tackle is one of the points now for Jimmy Hill. Before I deal with that tackle, I'd like to deal with one or two of the good things from the game. First of all, the mystery of why Crystal Palace fell away in the second half. To me, it was no mystery because their extra enthusiasm and running power in the first half had really got Leeds on the rack. And on a heavy ground, it was small wonder that in the second half, Leeds, with their extra teamwork and class, were able, able to take over and come through with a draw. A draw, I thought, was a fair result. But I was on about finishing, the finishing of the England forwards last Wednesday at Cardiff. And in talking about it, maybe I was a bit critical. The players yesterday seemed to think that they were going to show me that the finishing in British football was as good as anywhere else in the world. John Craven, particularly, scored two goals last time the cameras were on him, got another two yesterday, and just look at this first one, a really beautiful goal. Don Rogers slides it across to him, and at this moment the crowd were barracking him. They thought he slipped and was slow, but he certainly turned those moans into cheers. A very strong tackle there, beating Cherry to the ball, but look at that shot. Have you ever seen a more beautiful picture of a ball driven hard and high into the net? A really fantastic goal there from John Craven. You know how happy he is with that one. The second one, 
he was started off again. Then there's Payne on the ball, and it's a slightly mishit shot there with his left foot. He's kept it low, but Craven getting inside Cherry, maybe unfamiliar there in the left back position for Leeds United. A lesson for them there gets his second goal. But what about the Leeds goals? Jones, having seen the way Craven can hit the ball, thought I might do just as well. But first, let's look at that marvellous picture there of a chess trap by Peter, Peter Lorimer. Pure skill at its very best. More of Lorimer in a minute, but now let's look at the way he sets up the goal. Alan Clark, who many people thought had a quiet game, you'll see now it was his chasing and tackling that led to both goals. Here he goes in, in fact wins the ball, rather luckily perhaps in the end, but what about that for a left foot shot? In exactly the same corner of the goal, almost as if there was a magnet there drawing it in. Really first class shooting and finishing power. And the other goal, Leeds' other goal, which Palace complained about, look at John Jackson here and Mick Jones. I think you'll see that, in fact, Jackson wasn't fouled. Mick Jones just ducked. But you can also see that Charlie Cook here is caught napping by Clark, challenging again. The ball comes back. There's Johnny Giles on it. And if you look as he shoots, just look at Jackson's position before he moves across there. I think you'll see that maybe he was fractionally uh, too much towards the left-hand post. So much for the four goals in the game. But what skill am I going to pick out above all others in a very interesting game? For me, it was Peter Lorimer, uh, a much improved player, most impressed with his play. He, he strung over a whole stream of centres throughout the game, always pushing the ball across the target area. But more than that, it was the power of his shooting, the power that are in those boots, that really impressed me. Here's the first shot coming up now. No time at all to hit it, but you can see the speed that brought out that fine save from Jackson. He always seems to be able to hit the target when, he, when he's having a shot. Here we pick him up in a moment from a volley. First time volley he had on the edge of the box. Bates, as it's pushed up the right wing, will cross it. He had a first class game, I thought, Bates yesterday. And there's Lorimer on the hook there, getting even mesmerising uh, Jackson to mishandle that, although there wasn't all that much power in that shot. But now I want you to look at a dipping shot. He hits this one on the upswing, putting overspin on the ball, and just see the speed at which it bounces back off Jackson. Look at that. Quite extraordinary, the power that was still in that ball at the end of 35 yards. And after that, the most extraordinary through ball I've seen in many years of football. Just watch as Harvey rolls the ball to him here. He's going to hit a 70-yard through pass to Mick Jones. There it goes. It's in the air. It's still in the air. And it drops from one penalty area to the other. You can check the position of that uh, 70 yards as Jones come out beyond the 18-yard line there. I think you can see quite quick, uh, clearly. But what about the camera, the things that the camera might reveal yesterday that weren't seen otherwise? One thing the cameras taught me was that when Giles shot from a volley in the first half, I thought, in fact, that the ball had hit the post. And we find, on looking at it afterwards, that, in fact, it was a deflection, and he was... Crystal Palace were very unlucky indeed. There it appeared from the normal angle as if the ball had hit the post. But our camera behind the goal reveals quite a lot. There it is coming out. You can see the way Giles positions himself, hits it on the left foot. And there's Taylor deflecting it. And, and Jackson, although he's going the other way, just getting the ball, the hit of it on, uh, hitting it on his bottom and keeping it out of the goal. But what about the unpleasant thing from yesterday that the camera revealed? I want to show now the Norman Hunter tackle. Bert Head complained about it this morning, and I think in many ways he was quite right. Let's look at it now. Referee Mathewson was on the spot, and he saw this. Foot up, Hunter comes in, a foot or more over the top of the ball, without any doubt, on Craven's shin. And he was very lucky, he had his name taken, but for me he was very lucky that he wasn't sent off the field straight away. In case Leeds United supporters who live in the London area are thinking I'm having a go at their team again, let me tell you, I'm not. But if you think I am, would you perhaps write to me and say whether I had the right on television to deplore tackles like that, whether they come from Leeds United or anywhere else? Well, our bonus match today gives another example of the rise of Norwich City. Everybody thought, I suppose everybody outside Norfolk, that is, that it would be a bad struggle for them in the First Division this season. Where do they lie today? A very handy six, thank you very much. Yesterday, they were at home to West Bromwich Albion. Anglia's cameras were there. Commentator is Jerry Harrison. Norwich here in the plain shirts. The referee indeed has given a free kick. Stringer is coming up for this one. Jeff Battle, Stringer coming at the back of the run, cross, and Stringer gets the credit off his shoulder, 
Latchford really caught out there. The goalkeeper should have had that one. But 10 minutes gone, and Latchford, this young West Bromwich Albion goalkeeper, caught struggling. So Stringer gets the credit. Livermore taking it away to Black. Away goes Cross. Robertson, his pattern. Can he get in on his left? Not quite free enough. Good play by Suckett to get it away there. Here's Cantello now breaking forward. Gould going on his right. Cantello with a lot of room. Trying one. Oh, what a great shot. Tony Brown goes up. What a tremendous effort from Cantello, and he's still chasing. Cut out by Cross. And that's a double warning for Norris City. With just over a minute of this second half gone. Cross. Bone and Merrick. Free kick. Difficult task for Alan Merrick here, marking someone like Jim Bowen. He doesn't normally play in the back, at the back there, Alan Merrick. He's either in midfield or a fullback, and not too much first division experience. But uh, there's Bowen now. First of all, retrieving the ball, getting the situation sized up. Bowen taking up his position to the right of that wall. So, be interesting to see what Patton has in store here. In the first half he almost scored, direct shot, Patton again. And poor Peter Latchford. The crowd were taking it out Reverend, delighted by that, but they had a view of that one as it curved away. A, a definite curler. And poor Peter Latchford absolutely left helpless. So 2-0 then to Norwich, they're proving a very hard side indeed to beat down there at Carrow Road. Next we come to your letters, or rather to one of them, because we've got so much good action around the programme today. And this one refers to that brilliant wall striker John Richards, Mr Jack Ross from Brighton. Spotted what he called a superb piece of running off the ball by Richards in the game against West Ham United. We often show goals again, he said, why couldn't we spotlight this? Let's do it, Jim. It's often easy to see players using their intelligence off the ball, or on the ball, not always so off it. We can see Richards dashing across the screen there at the bottom, pulling his player with him, his player marking him, and making that hole there for Kindon to steam through. And in fact, it created the opening for that shot, but also look at him now, in case there should be a rebound. There he is in shot there. In case the ball rebounded from a goalkeeping save, he'd be in there with a chance to score a goal. Richards using his head when he's not on the ball, but he can also use his skill when he's on it. A very promising player, he's had an under-23 cap already, but look here against Arsenal last week. A touch in the air and an unenviable position there, but look what he made of it. And luckily, just s sneaking against the bar there. Look again in slow motion, on the run through the middle. He's pacey, alert and alive, he gets the touch up there, just the right amount of uh, pace on that ball so that he can catch it. But here's the naughty situation. How's he going to get that ball in the goal? A flick off the outside of the foot, turning the ball over and rolling it into that goal, but so unluckily, just against the bar. The skill of John Richards. Yes, a young man, John Richards, who I'm sure is going to be pressing very strongly for an England place in the months to come. Our last match today is the one that had all Manchester arguing last week and probably will still have them arguing again this week. Manchester City against Manchester United at Main Road. Granada TV were there, commentator Gerald Sinstad. Manchester City wearing the lighter shirts. Dummy Sadler into expecting the cross. And Sadler gave away the corner. So Summerby to take it, but Lee just beside him. That's pulled Buchan out of the middle. Doyle getting up, but he didn't meet it. And it's in! A mistake by Stepney, and a goal by Bell. Colin Bell, the scorer, as the ball came over from Summerby's corner. Doyle goes for the header. The ball goes straight up in the air, straight through the arms of Stepney, and Bell is on the spot coaching. Jeffries to Doyle. Book. 
Val. And a gap for him. Alex Stepney will have been pleased to see that go past the post. Bell bursting through the gap just as he did against Wales. Header by Book. Nice, clever little flip on by Summerby to Doyle. Slowed it down a bit. Summerby to speed it up again. Bell. And Lee almost beat the goalkeeper to it. Got his head there first. And all the chances are being made by Manchester City. Taz. Rodney Marsh. On for Summerby. He's beaten the tackle. And he's beaten another man. And that's for Lee. Great save. Marvellous play by City. They're claiming it went over the line. Didn't look like it from here, but they down there clearly thought so. <laughs> Bell for Lee, who's offside again. Davis, Barrett's foot up dangerously high around the collarbone. <laughs> Corrigan coming for the punch and missing. Off the line by Barrett. What a very good save by the young boy. Davis given the goal to head at. done from behind and the referee angry with Dunn because Dunn has picked up the ball and quite right too Marsh completely away from Sadler to Bell and it's an own goal by Buffon. <laughs> Manchester United complete their own misery, but I think we can give the credit to Bell and to Manchester City. They'd already opened them up, but Stepney had no chance as Buffon came across his line and deflected the ball the other way. Marsh, looking for another corner, and getting it. Like shilling peas. Some of it a Marsh. Gonna have another one. through the gap and is obstructed five minutes to go Some of it. Book. And that's dangerous. 
Bell. In! Yet another mistake in the United defence to complete the most miserable of afternoons for them. And Bell makes it tell. Book cuts in. The ball now is safe, but a terrible back pass by Dunn. And a fine shot from Bell from the narrowest of angles. His second goal of the game. And Manchester City have it all wrapped up. Yes, pictures that say quite clearly Manchester City are back to their arrogant best. That's it. See you, of course, next weekend. Remember, in On the Ball next Saturday lunchtime, we have the League Cup draw for the semi-finals live and exclusive to ITV. We leave you with three of those happy moments at Crystal Palace yesterday when goals were scored, curiously, in that same square yard of netting. Again, making one of those unselfish runs, and it might lead the way over for Clark Knight. For Jones! Yes, and he made no mistake. Taking too long to get it away. Giles... Yes, he can, Craven.